The Northern Way, also known as the Tu Ober Way, later Way, or Yuan Way, was a dynasty founded by the Tu Ober clan of the Jiabe, which ruled northern China from 386 to 534 during the period of the Southern and Northern dynasties. Described as part of an era of political turbulence and intense social and cultural change, the Northern Wei dynasty is particularly noted for unifying northern China in 439. This was also a period of introduced foreign ideas, such as Buddhism, which became firmly established. Many antiques and artworks, both Taoist and Buddhist, from this period have survived. During the Taihe period of Emperor Shaowin, Court advisors instituted sweeping reforms and introduced changes that eventually led to the dynasty moving its capital from Datong to Luoyang. In 494, it was the time of the construction of the Yungang Grottoes near Datong during the mid to late 5th century. And towards the latter part of the dynasty, the Longmen Caves outside the later capital city of Luoyang, in which more than 30,000 Buddhist images from the time of this dynasty have been found. The two Oba renamed themselves the Yuan as a part of systematic sinicization. Towards the end of the dynasty there was significant internal dissension resulting in a split into Eastern Wei and Western Wei. History Rise of the Tu Oba Jiabe The Jin dynasty had developed an alliance with the Tu Oba against the Xiongnu state Han Zhao. In 315 the Tu Oba chief was granted the title of the Prince of Dai. After the death of its founding prince, Tu Oba Yilu, however, the Dai state stagnated and largely remained a partial ally and a partial tributary state to later Zhao and former Yan finally falling to former Qin in 376, after former Qin's emperor Fu Jian was defeated by Jin forces at the Battle of Fei River in his failed bid to unify China. The former Qin state began to break apart. By 386, Tu Oba Gui, the son of Tu Oba Shi Li Jian, reasserted Tu Oba independence initially as the Prince of Dai. Later he changed his title to the Prince of Wei, and his state was therefore known as Northern Wei. In 391, Tu Oba Gui defeated the Ruran tribes and killed their chief, He Juahun, forcing the Ruran to flee west. Initially Northern Wei was a vassal of later Yan, but by 395 had rebelled and by 398 had conquered most of later Yan territory north of the Yellow River. In 399 Tu Oba Gui he declared himself Emperor Daowu, and that title was used by Northern Wei's rulers for the rest of the state's history. That same year he defeated the Tyla tribes near the Gobi Desert policies early in Northern Wei history. The state inherited a number of traditions from its initial history as a Jiabe tribe, and some of the more unusual ones. From a traditional Chinese standpoint, the officials did not receive salaries, but were expected to requisition the necessities of their lives directly from the people they governed. As the empire's history progressed, this appeared to be a major contributing factor leading to corruption among officials. Not until the second century of the empire's existence did the state begin to distribute salaries to its officials. Empresses were not named according to imperial favors or nobility of birth but required that the candidates submit themselves to a ceremony where they had to personally forge golden statues, as a way of discerning divine favor. Only an imperial consort who was successful in forging a golden statue could become the empress. All men, regardless of ethnicity, were ordered to tie their hair into a single braid that would then be rolled and placed on top of the head, and then have a cap worn over the head. When a crown prince is named, his mother, if still alive, must be forced to commit suicide, before naming prince fulling crown prince. As a result, because emperors would not have mothers, they often honored their wet nurses with the honorific title, Nurse Empress Dowager. As sinicization of the Northern Wei state progressed, these customs and traditions were gradually abandoned. Organization of the peasants' five families formed a neighborhood. Five Lin formed a village. 
Five Li formed a commune. At each of these levels, leaders that were associated with the central government were appointed, in order for the state to reclaim dry, barren areas of land. The state further developed this system by dividing up the land according to the number of men of an age to cultivate it. The Suai and Tang dynasties later resurrected this system in the 7th century. Deportations during the reign of Emperor Daowu the total number of deported people from the regions east of Taihang Shan to Datong was estimated to be around 460,000. Deportations typically took place once a new piece of territory had been conquered. Sinicization as the Northern Wei state grew, the emperor's desire for Han Chinese institutions and advisors grew. Sui Hao, an advisor at the courts in Datong played a great part in this process. He introduced Han Chinese administrative methods and penal codes in the Northern Wei state, as well as creating a Taoist theocracy that lasted until 450. The attraction of Han Chinese products, the royal court's taste for luxury, the prestige of Chinese culture at the time, and Taoism were all factors in the growing Chinese influence in the Northern Wei state. Chinese influence accelerated during the capital's move to Luoyang in 494 and Emperor Shaowen continued this by establishing a policy of systematic sinicization that was continued by his successors. Jiabe traditions were largely abandoned. The royal family took the sinicization a step further by changing their family name to Yuan. Marriages to Chinese families were encouraged. With this, Buddhist temples started appearing everywhere, displacing Taoism as the state religion. The temples were often created to appear extremely lavish and extravagant on the outside of the temples. Also from 460 onwards the emperor started erecting huge statues of the Buddha carved near their capital Ping Cheng which declared the emperors as the representatives of the Buddha and the legitimate rulers of China. The Northern Wei started to arrange for Han Chinese elites to marry daughters of the Jiabe to Oba royal family in the 480s. Some Han Chinese exiled royalty fled from southern China and defected to the Jiabe. Several daughters of the Jiabe Emperor Shaowen of Northern Wei were married to Han Chinese elites, like Princess Lan Ling to Lu Hui, who was a descendant of Lu Song royalty who fled north to the Jiabe in exile, Princess Wyang to see Mefei, a descendant of Jin Dynasty royalty, Princess Jin An to Lu Daoqian, Princess Nanyang to Seo Ba Royan, a member of Southern Qi royalty. Break up and division the heavy Chinese influence that had come into the Northern Wei state which went on throughout the 5th century had mainly affected the courts and the upper ranks of the two Oba aristocracy, armies that guarded the northern frontiers of the empire and the Jiabe people who were less sinicized began showing feelings of hostility towards the aristocratic court and the upper ranks of civil society. Early in Northern Wei history, defense on the northern border against Ruran was heavily emphasized, and military duty on the northern border was considered honored service that was given high recognition. After all, throughout the founding and the early stages of the Northern Wei, it was the strength of the sword and bow that carved out the empire and kept it. But once Emperor Shaowin's sinicization campaign began in earnest military service, particularly on the northern border, was no longer considered an honorable status, and traditional Jiabe warrior families on the northern border were disrespected and disallowed many of their previous privileges. These warrior families who had originally been held as the upper class now found themselves considered a lower class on the social hierarchy. In 523, rebellions broke out on six major garrison towns on the northern border and spread like wildfire throughout the north. These rebellions lasted for a decade, exacerbating the situation. Empress Dowager who poisoned her own son Emperor Xiaoming in 528 after Emperor Xiaoming showed disapproval of her handling of the affairs as he started coming of age and got ready to reclaim the power that had been held by the Empress in his name when he inherited the throne as an infant. 
giving the Empress Dowager rule of the country for more than a decade. Upon hearing the news of the 18-year-old Emperor's death, the general Erdu Rong, who had already mobilized on secret orders of the Emperor to support him in his struggle with the Empress Dowager Hu, turned toward Lu Yang, announcing that he was installing a new Emperor chosen by an ancient Jabe method of casting bronze figures. Erdu Rong summoned the officials of the city to meet their new emperor. However, on their arrival, he told him they were to be punished for their misgovernment and butchered them, throwing the Empress Hu and her candidate into the Yellow River. Reports estimate 2,000 courtiers were killed in this Heia massacre on the 13th day of the second month of 528. The two generals Erdu dominated the imperial court thereafter. The emperor held power in name only and most decisions actually went through the Erdu. The emperor did stop most of the rebellions, largely reunifying the northern Wei state. However, Emperor Rushao Zhuang, not wishing to remain a puppet emperor and highly wary of the Erdu clan's widespread power and questionable loyalty and intentions towards the throne, killed Erdu Rong in 530 in an ambush at the palace, which led to a resumption of civil war, initially between Erzhu's clan and Emperor Shao Zhuang. And then, after their victory over Emperor Shao Zhuang in 531, between the Erdu clan and those who resisted their rule, in the aftermath of these wars, two generals set in motion the actions that would result in the splitting of the Northern Way into the Eastern and Western Way. General Gao Wan was originally from the northern frontier, one of many soldiers who had surrendered to Uaju, who eventually became one of the Urja clan's top lieutenants. But later, Gao Wan gathered his own men from both Han and non-Han troops to turn against the Urju clan, entering and taking the capital Luoyang in 532. Confident in his success, he set up a nominee emperor on the Luoyang throne and continued his campaigns abroad. The emperor, however, together with the military head of Luoyang, Hu Xichun, began to plot against Gao Wan. Gao Wan succeeded, however, in keeping control of Luoyang, and the unfaithful ruler and a handful of followers fled west to the region ruled by the powerful warlord Yuan Tai. Gao Wan then announced his decision to move the Luoyang court to his capital city of Yi. Within three days of the decree, 400,000 families perhaps 2 million people had to leave their homes in and around the capital to move to Ye as autumn turned to winter. There now existed two rival claimants to the Northern Wei throne, leading to the state's division in 534 to 535 into the Eastern Wei and Western Wei. Fall neither Eastern Way nor Western Way was long lived. In 550, Gao An's son Gao Yang forced Emperor Shao Jing of Eastern Way to yield the throne to him, ending Eastern Way and establishing the Northern Qi. Similarly, in 557, Yuan Tai's nephew Yu Yuan who forced Emperor Gong of Western Way to yield the throne to Yuan Tai's son Yu Wen Ju, ending the Western Way and establishing the Northern Zhou, finally extinguishing Northern Vi's imperial rule. Sovereigns of the Northern Wei dynasty